It's tax day, America, the day where you send money to the government so that you can supposedly help people that need it. Just think about how much good you're doing. So let me ask you, do you feel charitable today? BlazeTV.com slash Stu is a place to go to get your Blaze TV subscription. Ten bucks off if you use the promo code Stu. Sarah Gonzalez is with us today to celebrate 1,000 episodes of the news mattering. Andrew Cuomo makes a shameless plea to New Yorkers, but we start by doing tax day. Oh, welcome to it, ladies and gentlemen. It's tax day. The IRS has wrapped up its tax season with the same old problems. Um, the U.S. Treasury bemoaned the challenges the IRS fe- faces each year during tax season and urged the Biden administration to provide more resources to perform its duties. It's been an incredibly trying and difficult time, said the Treasury official during a background call with reporters. And I know that's how I feel. I feel very worried about how difficult a time the IRS is having this time of year. Are they so busy ruining everyone's lives all at the same time? It must be consuming of their mental capacities. I, for one, am incredibly worried about such things. And it's about this time, every tax day, I think to myself, you know, I wish I could do more. You know, these taxes that come in, they ask you to pay a certain amount that's required by law or you eventually will go to prison. But am I doing enough? These people are doing such a good job in Washington and they have such a difficult task stealing all of our money. Wouldn't it be great if I could do just a little bit more, maybe send some extra money? I know all the people on the left out there are thinking to themselves, this sounds like a great idea. I keep saying that I want taxes to be higher. Why don't I just send more money? Well, here's how you do it. This is the address, and this is real. You can do this right now, liberals. Gifts to the United States. U.S. Department of the Treasury Reporting and Analysis Branch 2, P.O. Box 1328, Parkersburg, West Virginia, 26106-1328. I assume you probably want to write that uh, message down. So I'm just, I'll pause for a second for you to fully digest. Do we have the uh, address one more time? I'm just going to leave this up on the screen for just a couple of seconds because you're probably halfway through writing it down right now on an envelope because you want to send thousands and thousands of dollars. Certainly, if you're a liberal and you're consistent, you're doing this right now. Right, guys? Because you believe it's much better for your money to go to the government than to a charity. Obviously, the government does a better job or you wouldn't want taxes to be through the roof. So go ahead, send all your money right here. Gifts to the United States, U.S. Department of the Treasury, Reporting and Analysis Branch 2, P.O. Box 1328, Parkersburg, West Virginia, 26106-1328. Nobody's doing that, are they? Nobody. And why aren't they? Because everyone knows It's dumb. It's ridiculous. The entire day that we have to celebrate today, and I mean celebrate, because this is the type of day we should all remember exactly what is happening to us. We'll get into that a little bit more here in a second, but I can't take how they're trying to spin this now. You know, there's a big industry that goes on around taxes. We waste tons of money and time getting into this, and now we're starting to get commercials like this one from H&R Block. Watch. Hear that? It's your money. Sarah. It's refund season, Mm. and nobody gets more of your money back than Block. Guaranteed. Get your billions back, America! Ah, yes, get your billions back. What a fun day it is. It's refund season. What an incredible thing to celebrate. Now, if you listen closely, it's getting your billions back. It is uh, getting your money back. And yes, you're getting your money back. But this is not some gift. This is not some gracious effort from the U.S. government. 
People treat this as if it's some holiday. Do you understand what's going on with your money? I assume the conservative nerds in this audience do, but there's a lot of people out there that don't. They look at this as some wonderful thing. Oh, look at this great thing where the government is gonna send me a refund. You know what? Refunds suck. Refunds are a function of the entire system failing. This is the US government taking your money holding it for months and months and months and months and then giving it back to you after they've been able to use it and you haven't. You don't earn interest on it, that's for sure. They just steal it from you for a long period of time unless you really, really watch things very, very closely and try to even it out at the end. And even, of course, if you try that, you may very well miss very badly. This is like, and I, this is like celebrating a kidnapping let me show you from the documentary Man on Fire what I'm talking about. Oh. See, they released the kid. You all right? I didn't hurt you. Hi. <laughs> Mother's waiting for you. She's right down here on the end of the bridge. Okay, you go home. Yeah. All right. Where are you going? I'm going home too. Oh, did you see how excited Denzel was to get the stolen child back? Well, of course you're happy, I guess, in that case. It's certainly better than them keeping the child forever. But half the country is Denzel Washington. They sit around and they say, oh, thank you, oh, glorious government, for giving me back the money that I earned that you stole. Thank you. It's, it, it, thank you so much for that. Let me release these dollars back into the over the bridge to my bank account on the other side so you could probably steal it later on, too. It's really frustrating, and I can't take what is going on when it comes to uh, our tax system. It's terrible. It's been terrible forever, and no one can seem to get their hands around it. You know what I did this weekend? Easter weekend. You know what I did this weekend? Taxes. That's what I did. I sat around, and I, well, I shouldn't say that. That's kind of a lie. I didn't do my taxes. I went through hours and hours of work to prepare for my extension. I didn't file my extension, no, no. Instead, what I did was get a bunch of crap together so I could send it to my accountant and she can file the extension. And then if I'm lucky, if I'm lucky, by September, I'll probably file the thing. Isn't that great? What a great system. Why do I spend one second going through all this crap? Well, I have to because that's the system that we have. And you probably had to spend a lot of time on your taxes here over the past couple of months as well. In fact, the average person spends 13 hours getting their taxes together. That's six hours of rec record keeping, two hours of tax planning, uh, four hours of com form completion and submission, and another hour on other stuff with an average of $240. Now, if you happen to be a business taxpayer, it's even worse. 28% of people do that, 23 hours of total time, 12 hours of record keeping, four hours of tax planning, five hours of form completion and submission, two hours of other, and a cost of $470. For what? Are you contributing anything to the economy at that point? No, you're just wasting your time, time you could have been spent spending doing other things that could benefit the economy, or maybe just, I don't know, hanging out with your kids. Maybe deal, doing something that you wanted to do. Nope, that's not what we do here in America. We spend hours and hours and hours on taxes. It's embarrassing. It is embarrassing that it happens this way. They, you know, people say withholding, withholding, please. I would love if we could change the system. I have to pay some of my taxes in, in quarterly payments. So I get the entire amount and then I have to just write large checks all throughout the year to the government in big chunks. That's how everyone should have to do it. You know why? It makes you feel it a little bit. It makes you feel it. You know, when they just give, they take it out of their, the, the, the check before they hand it to you. I remember when I was younger, I had it that way. And it was like, oh, you know, hey, whatever. This is what I get paid. And you get used to it. You don't get used to it when they give you the whole amount and then you got to send a giant check away. Ronald Reagan talked about that as one of the solutions to fixing this tax uh, problem that we have to get people invested in it so they care about these, these rates because it's really completely ridiculous. You shouldn't be able to take people's money when you did nothing for it. Um, the 
tax burden is bad. It's not as bad here in Texas as it may be in your state. Here we have no uh, state income tax, though the sales tax and the property tax are pretty high uh, as compared to the nation. There are better, there are better uh, states as far as that goes, but zero income tax goes quite a long way. The worst state in America, uh, according to WalletHub, is New York. We have a 12.75% total tax burden, 4.43% property tax, individual income tax, 4.9%, and sales and excise tax burden is 342 Now, of course, the individual tax burden goes a heck of a lot higher at the top end uh, in places like New York and in California. It's over 11% just for California. If you're in New York City and you happen to, God forbid, be someone who's earning a lot of money, you not only have to pay the top uh, federal income tax rate, you have to pay the top New, uh, New York uh, state rate, which is something like 8.82% or something like that. And then another 5% on top of that, because you have the right to live in the city, which is a place basically you can depend on someone urinating on you almost every single day, but you pay uh, heavily for that privilege. And it's, it's quite nice. It, you know, I'm not going to get into what you, you might be into that. I'm just saying some people aren't. Uh, so there's a thing they call Tax Freedom Day. This is sort of the sister day to uh, when women uh, rights activists, they all say, well, gosh, well, you know, men make this, you know, more money and you, women have to work until whatever the day it is, March 5th to uh, for Women's Equality Day. They have to work all those days for free. Now, of course, we've gone over the reasons why that is completely ridiculous and untrue uh, from the start. But there is a, an equivalent day for taxes. It's called Tax Freedom Day. This is from, uh, let me give you the pre-pandemic one here so we don't get all weird with all the pandemic numbers. But you see here Tax Freedom Day 2019. Um, when does it arrive? Well, it depends on where you are, of course. Um, some of them are April 20th. Some of them are April 18th. Uh, it's into May in New York. Uh, you realize that April 23rd, April 30th, April 12th, May 3rd. This is a depressing map. This means that you're working until April 18th or whatever the date is until you make a dollar. All those days before your tax day, uh, freedom, tax freedom day arriving, you work for the government. Every dime you make goes there. And until you get until, you know, May, mid-May or so, you don't start earning anything for yourself. How does that make you feel? How does that make you feel? It doesn't make me feel good. I'll tell you that. And it would be one thing if maybe they were doing something good with the money, but they're not. They're not. Uh, here is a breakdown of why you work all those days. The average person works 42 days just to pay their income taxes. 26 days just to pay their payroll taxes. 15 days just to pay sales and excise taxes. 11 days just to pay property taxes. Another six days for other various uh, taxes and five days for corporate income taxes. That is how bad this situation is. And it goes on and on and on and on. And let me give you a, a little breakdown of what this means. What does this tax situation mean to you? What do we do in this country? We all know that we have a certain amount of basic foundational needs, things that we do to provide to our kids, to our families, to try to give them the opportunity to be creative, to, to celebrate their faith, to celebrate their hobbies, their passions, whatever, uh, to find love, to do all the things that we think about romantically uh, in, in life. And I don't mean like romantically in, in, in the bedroom. I mean, I guess that, you know, for some people like Jeffy, that might be part of it. But I'm saying like just the romantic vision of what life is, right? Travel, uh, family, uh, love, life, all of it. All of that, even your career passion. You have to do all of those things to get past all of the basics, to get to the, uh, the fun stuff. You have to have food. You have to have clothing. You have to have shelter and you have to pay taxes. Well, guess what costs more? In fact, in 2019, it will cost more for most people to pay taxes than it will housing, clothing and food combined. Think about that. That is those are the basic building blocks of life. Once you get past clothing, food, and housing, everything's sort of gravy. You know, that's kind of the, the everything else is the fun part of life, I guess. Yet you're going to pay more in taxes than all of those three things combined. That is mind boggling. You know, I think about that every once in a while. Think about the stuff where your dollars go. All the waste, you know, we, we do these little segments where, like, oh, won't it be funny? We'll talk about the turtle tunnels. Oh, they're, 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 they're cutting. 
tunnels under the road so the turtles don't get killed as they cross the road. Uh, it costs $500,000. <laughs> Do you believe this government wasting your money? Think of how many years you'd have to work to pay $500,000 in taxes. If you're the average American, you might not pay that in your entire life when it comes to income taxes, and it wouldn't even fund one freaking turtle tunnel. Look, the truth is our tax system is beyond broken. It is shredded. Last year, the government brought in $4 trillion of revenue. About half of it came from the income tax. And now they want more? This is not a revenue problem. This is a spending problem. Because after taking in $4 trillion, we managed to spend $6.82 trillion. We could double the amount we take in from the income tax, and still we wouldn't have enough money to break even. And the problem keeps getting worse. In fact, we are expecting to take in about $4.2 trillion in taxes this year. If you dropped the income tax to zero, literally zero, zero dollars for everyone, we would still take in as much money as we did at the beginning of Barack Obama's presidency. And that's without accounting for all the obvious increase in economic activity that would happen if we actually eliminated the income tax. We don't have to go back to the 1920s. We just have to make do with the relatively stringent spending habits of Barack freaking Obama, and we could all pay no income tax. But it's more than just the money. It's the time. It's the hassle. It's the constant suicidal thoughts that you can't keep out of your mind when trying to figure out whether to deduct an $8 stapler. It's the fact that we all exist in this world where we are legally required to play by rules that nobody understands. We all risk fines and possible prison time if we don't navigate the 4,000 pages of the tax code and 65,000 pages of attached directions that we all hope and pray our accountants or Mr. TurboTax actually understand. We might all hope and pray that the pain goes away, but the reality is we need to feel it more. This passive system where someone helpfully withholds our funds until they are graceful enough to give us a refund makes us all feel disconnected to the torture we're enduring. We allow the government to hold our own money hostage for months and then we cheer them on when they allow us to get some of it back. And it's worse on a high inf inf inflation environment that we're in today. Every dollar that, that they give back to you is worth 5 or 10 or 20% less than when they took it. And what do they do when they have it? They waste it over and over again. And then they print more. And then we get more inflation. And the cycle goes on and on and on and on in perpetuity. It's tax day, America. Do you feel charitable today? Spring and summer are the seasons for finally getting outdoors and entertaining. I'm talking about pool parties, grilling up some food, maybe tossing a baseball around. It's awesome, right? It's a great time of the year. But if your, if your yard kind of looks like a plant cemetery, you're not gonna enjoy it nearly as much, which is why you should get your place looking up to snuff easily with fast growing trees. When it comes to caring for your plants, know-how is absolutely important. And that's why fastgrowingtrees.com, they have experts to curate thousands of plants and their varieties and all the different stuff that you don't understand and I don't understand. I have no idea what this stuff is. All I know is when you go to fastgrowingtrees.com, you can put in your specific climate and location, and it will give you a selection of trees and plants that work in your area so they don't just die like all my old trees have. I just ordered brand new trees from fastgrowingtrees.com. I'm so excited because, honestly, the last batch of them died when it got cold. That's not going to happen now. There's no waiting in lines. There's no messy cars uh, from, you know, having to, to haul plants all over town. You just order online over the, or over the phone. You can do it as well. And your plants are shipped to your door in a couple of days. Fast Growing Trees uh, has growing and care advice available 24-7. Whether you're looking for increased privacy or shade or just add some natural beauty to your yard, Fast Growing Trees has the perfect plants and the expertise to help you find them. Go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash stew. Right now, you will get 15% off your entire order if you do so. 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com slash stew. It's fastgrowingtrees.com slash stew.
It's always wonderful bringing Sarah Gonzalez on the program. You can find her on the Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered YouTube channel as well as Blaze TV's The News and Why It Matters. And speaking of that, The News and Why It Matters aired its 1,000th episode today. You can find it and watch it right now on the YouTubes or on Blaze TV or wherever you get your podcasts. Sarah, how's it going? It's going well. I don't know. I feel like I've aged. <laughs> a thousand episodes feels like a really long time. It really is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, to, what, two years of that is during a pandemic where everyone has aged approximately 80 years. Yes. So, I, I, it was a little scary watching the montage back at yeah. us as younger people. Yes. Those old days. It was a little depressing, right? Uh, yeah. Like, oh, it's a little. You remember I was those? a baby. Yeah. Those, those days seem so much more innocent. Before I knew anything about mask <laughs> mandates. <laughs> right. And vaccine mandates Not, and nothing. any of those. Nothing. Yeah. Well, take me back to the beginning because I think like now people who subscribe to Blaze TV, you're a staple here. You've been here. You've been doing the show for, you know, a long time. Yeah. But that was not the case back on episode one. No, you were no. not. You do, you're not hosting a show. This is our first show. It, it was terrifying. First of all, <laughs> yeah. I was absolutely terrified. I was a nobody. Who? Uh, I mean, I appeared on Dana Lash's show. Yeah. I of course got my start as a reporter on theblaze.com. So mm. I was, but I was doing. I was typing, right? I was writing stuff. I was writing articles. I was reporting things online. I wasn't like trying to moderate a program with you guys. <laughs> right. Who, I don't know if anyone can tell, but these guys are not easy to rein in. No, so, no. Um, I was thrown into this. Obviously, I was very happy about it, but, you know, I had Glenn who was like, uh, oh, by the way, at the last second, oh, by the way, no, I don't want her to have a prompter. And I was like, do you hate me? <laughs> Why don't you want me to have a prompter? I've asked myself, myself that so many times right? about Glenn. Do, Do you, you hate, hate me? me? Yeah, it's uh, I think the common. answer is always yes. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, Glenn, and back in, this is before, you know, we merged and, like, you know, the whole structure change. Glenn really had a lot to do with, like, designing mm -hmm. the sets mm -hmm. and, you know, as we pointed out on the show, the plate of broccoli and cauliflower yes. that's in the middle of the show to it this day. It was not my pick. That was not your pick. <laughs> it no. was not your pick. Glenn wanted something green in the middle of the table for yeah. some reason that we'll never understand. And, that, and you go back, you watch that old footage. First day, it's a tiny, tiny table. <laughs> it looks almost like a stool, like you could sit on it, like a stool. And it's five of us mm -hmm, around there. Mm -hmm. um, myself, uh, you, Pat Gray, Glenn Beck, and Doc Thompson. Doc Thompson. It was, it was just crazy to watch that again. Yeah, it, well, and fun fact for, uh, for the viewers who didn't get to see behind the scenes. So I was surrounded by all of you guys. You're all obviously larger than me. I'm this <laughs> tiny little girl, it looks like. And I've got Glenn Beck, who's gigantic on one side of me, and Doc Thompson, who's gigantic <laughs> on the other side of me. And they had to actually build me a box <laughs> to set my chair on just so I didn't look like a midget around the table next to you guys. It's a little person, Sarah. Little <laughs> sorry, person. Sorry, I'm sorry. That was insensitive of me. The PC term that is more demeaning than the other term. <laughs> like a little person. Like it just sounds terrible. Um, yeah. So you got into the show and, and you first started out. It, and the show started sort of differently than it, it, it is now. Way differently, it, yeah. It was, if I remember, we were on every day. Yes. It was the same people on every yes. day. And we would come to the table and just kind of talk about like what the most important thing from our shows were. Yeah, well, well, from your shows or you didn't get into it in your show, but yeah. you felt like it was the most important story of the day. Yeah. And I never had any, I mean, as evidenced by the montage that I played, right, of Glenn like sniffing uh, our makeup artist's <laughs> hair. Yes. I didn't, I never had any, I had no idea where anyone was going to go with <laughs> anything. I just had to sit there and be like, okay, I'm just supposed to navigate a conversation that I have no idea where it's going to go. It was yeah. Fun. That's crazy. And so, it, but it's evolved over time. Yeah. Uh, now, kind of a rotating cast of people coming in and out every day. What, 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 do you, what have you learned from this experience? You know, it's funny. Uh, we talked about the prompter thing just a second ago. And um, I think I've learned a lot just specifically because Glenn told me, you can't, you can't use prompter. I, he said, I don't want you to be a talking head. I, I want more for you. I want you to be able to navigate a conversation without relying on just a script right there yeah. that you have to focus on and you're not paying attention and you're not, you know. So at the time, I was like, damn you, Glenn Beck. Mm -hmm. But looking back on it, it was the greatest thing he could have done for me because I really learned how to navigate the conversation, really hone in on what the person is saying, know where I'm going to go next and not have to rely on uh, a prompter. Um, but mostly I've learned that when you're in the news industry, you just want to die <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I, and that, am I, am I correct? You're 100% yeah. correct. Yeah. And both of us were awarded an, an incredible <laughs> opportunity to die when a pandemic hit. And it's, true. it's funny because like we, this place was 
empty. Dead, yeah. It was like me, you, and Pat. Yeah. Uh, the only people I saw for a really long time. I yeah. mean, Glenn was home doing the show. I was doing the radio show in yeah, there wasn't by myself. Yeah, wasn't that nice for Glenn? Yeah, it was nice for Glenn. Uh, <laughs> Pat was in there pretty much yep. by himself. I don't even know if Keith was coming in for a good chunk of that time. And, you know, I remember doing one of the first shows, I guess it was had to be in March or maybe it was mm-hmm. April. I don't remember when. when on, I think that was March. It had to be in March, mm-hmm. right? When, ap- right after the shutdown, there was nobody here. Everyone was terrified to get, you know, near another yeah. person. Yeah. And they just, they were like, ah, you guys just sit at the same table, me and you, <laughs> and a screen with somebody else. I don't remember who the third person was. <laughs> they didn't care about our lives at all. At all? No. I know. I was like, what is with this, like, non-essential essential? I'm obviously non-essential <laughs> yeah. because you're bringing me in to contract COVID and die. Yeah. That's what I believe. It's, so, it's funny because we really, a lot of people did argue that, no, I'm totally not essential. You do not need me at this place. You do not <laughs> need to bring me in. Right. Everyone started arguing that. And it went on for, like, months after COVID, like, went away. Yeah. Like, people were just like, yeah, no, I'm just really terrified about the COVID yeah. stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Got to wait until there's a vaccine. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I don't know. That Omicron variant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a little scary, a little dicey. I should probably stay at home a little longer. But it was it was crazy. The skeleton crew. Yeah. Right? Well, we had it in in my house anyway, because my husband and I, you know, my husband's the director here. And like, we just had to swap off. My, my son was al- already out of school, mm-hmm. uh, obviously unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. So he literally, he would go, he would come here, he would work because the crew still had to work from here. Glenn was working from home, yeah. but the crew still had to do the show from here. So he would come work here. He would haul his tail home We'd literally like tag out Mm -hmm. and he'd take care of my son. And then I'd come up here and do the show because he's out of school. Who takes care of him? We have no idea because we both have to literally come in. Whereas most couples, if both of them work, a lot of them were working from home. So they didn't have to face that problem. But we were, it was dicey for a while. Yeah, yeah. It really, I mean, it's just one of those, there's so many of those stories that have happened. You actually had a pretty uh, unique one as well in that you got pregnant right around the time of the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. So people didn't even know and they left. Yeah. And then they saw you again, and all of a sudden, some things had changed. There was, yeah, there was a baby that I had with me. Yeah, no, it, it was crazy because I didn't announce that I was pregnant. I was not showing or anything uh, before when people left. No you one knew. was in the building. I knew. But you hadn't announced We yet. knew in January of 2020. Mm, perfect timing. <laughs> right. Uh, in hindsight, yeah. I'm like, well, I'm really glad we had him because if we had waited two months and seen what was going to happen in the world, we would have been like, nah. Yeah, let's wait on this one. We'll pass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll pass. And then so much time would have elapsed that we would have been like, nah. I think we're like we're done because we had a little window that we were like, you know what? Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. So it was January 2020 when I found out that I was pregnant. And then everyone left the building, everything shut down. And I literally went through all of my pregnancy with like no one in the building. So by the time everyone came back, <laughs> I, I had literally gone through a pregnancy, been super gigantic pregnant and popped out a baby and no one was here to see any of it. It's bizarre. Yeah. It's such a weird time. I, 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 every once in a while, like it strikes me that like I'm gonna have to explain this to my kids. I know. That you guys went through this really weird thing. Like unprecedented. For the history books. Yeah. I don't know how the history books will be written. Right. But I can tell you what really happened. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it really is. So when you look back at, uh, the, what was it, four years now to get to 1,000 episodes? Yeah, about four almost, years. Almost, yeah. Um, what are the, oh, yeah. obviously COVID's a big one. Mm-hmm. What are the stories that you really remember as like the biggest things that you covered? Jeez. I mean, my mind is so like uh, broken from COVID yeah. that it really takes up most of my, because that was two of the years. It's, it's been two of the, it's been almost half the time that we've been doing the program, we've been having to deal with that. Yeah. Before that, it was like, you know, Glenn would bring in his pet project about AI. Yeah. You That's know? right. I remember those days. Yeah. yeah. And then we would talk about um, the the uh, 2018 midterms, mm. uh, the 2020 election. But what I what I always I'm going to tell you this too. Mm-hmm. I remember having a conversation with you and Glenn Uh-oh. about Kamala Harris. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I yeah. think this was this was mm-hmm. after the maybe the midterm the 2018 midterms but like before 2020 mm-hmm. and you guys were both convinced mm-hmm. that Kamala was a huge threat because she was so likable <laughs> and seemed so genuine wow. and mm. I told you guys I said I completely I, disagree. Yes, you I did. I do horrible. I couldn't have backed this up. And you, you guys were like I don't know, she seems really likable. Now I will say this in our defense or at least in <laughs> mine. I don't know what Glenn was thinking, but in my defense 
we were talking, I think, about dark horse candidates to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she did have a run there and wound up. She's currently the vice president she of the United the States. So, so she I did, mean, yeah, it did work out well she, for her. She, you're right, she's not likable. She's not likable. <laughs> <laughs> definitely right on that. Um, uh, uh, so today's tax day. Yeah. I was just ranting about oh, it. I was, God, I, 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 All right, hold on. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's alcohol time. Hold on one second. Okay. I spent my Easter I weekend this now. not mm-hmm. handing out with my kids. Couldn't do that. Had to go uh, into my office and uh, type away at spreadsheets to mm-hmm. do my taxes. And, you know, I think there's a part of me that would say, you know, I don't like this tax thing, but our government's doing such good work and helping so many people. that if that were the truth, maybe I'd be a little bit okay with it. But knowing what is actually mm-hmm. going on, man, it's frustrating. It really is maddening. <laughs> it, it really pissed me off all weekend into today. Um, I, you know, it. you bring up a great point because they, they're constantly talking about all their pet projects, especially when it comes to uh, the LGBTQ plus IA whatever community. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's like, you know, we're we're going to put our money in uh, making sure that there's gender equality and diversity in corporations and all of these things. And it's like, that's not what I'm working my butt off for. At all. Mm. And we had to do the same thing. We have a fat paycheck that we have to send to the IRS Mm -hmm. today, knowing that they're literally just going to piss it away. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I really do genuinely feel like if we could just get enough conservatives with some uh, balls in office and finally just try to get it out of the paycheck, stop letting people contribute in their paycheck, make everyone contribute either monthly or quarterly. Everyone pays quarterly taxes, like at least I do. I don't know if you do, Mm -hmm. but pay quarterly taxes like a 1099 or someone who's not a W-2 employee I think thing, I think there would be riots because you're people so, would take to the streets if they knew how much money they were actually paying. They're so it's so infuriating to write the check because it's like it's different than it just okay someone's paying you X amount of dollars and you're like okay that's what my pay is right when you yeah you might see it on the form and you see the the gross and the net but you don't internalize it you just whatever money's coming to you is what yeah. you know, that's how I was when I was right. young and then as you get older like you know when especially when you're uh, you're running a company or you have a, a business that are, you're getting paid outside of the w2 mm-hmm. withholding situation mm-hmm. You're getting the entire amount, and you see the entire amount, and it goes into your account, and you're like, wow, there's the entire amount. And then you have to write this giant check every quarter to make yourself a, a citizen in good standing. Yeah, and you're like, the, the federal government literally did nothing for this money. Nothing. They did nothing except screw me over, yeah. and I have to pay them or else I could go to jail. But they can screw you, and they don't get to go to jail. No, they never get in trouble. And, you know, they don't even get in trouble when they target conservatives. Yep. Uh, we didn't even see that. Yep. And it's so – it's particularly frustrating because of of this place that we work and that like a lot of the things the government is doing are 180 degrees against yes. what we're fighting for. Yes. We earn our paycheck because we come in here like like it's a real job and and rant about <laughs> these topics and then they take you know a third of our salary mm-hmm. And then they run out there and do the exact opposite with it. Try to blow up everything we're trying to do here. It's really annoying. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) it's absolutely, it's so freaking frustrating. And again, I just feel like even, I feel like this would be something that we could agree on. Democrats, conservatives, Republicans, leftists, whoever. I feel like it would be something that we could agree upon if people really knew how much was coming out of their paychecks. They don't realize it. Yeah. And the government obviously did that on purpose. Yes, they so do. they don't know it. Yeah, I mean, they specifically said it back in the day when they, especially the the payroll tax. Yes, they want you, they wanted to think of it as a whole other tax, not even related. Mm-hmm. No one ever negotiates about that rate. Yeah, they only negotiate about the the main one, and and it's understandable. It's kind of the headline, but it is really frustrating. Those things just keep eating you up all the time. I mean, you you have to believe that like there's going to come a point where obviously, I mean, we believe this as capitalists, but. The people who create all of these things, innovation is going to be stifled because people are just going to be like, why the hell would I work so hard just for the government to come in and take half of my money? Why, why would I do that? Uh, why, why would you? And it's going to get worse. Yeah. I mean, you look at the, the finances going forward with all the money that we're going to, if interest rates go up and all the money we already owe, plus all the dumb programs they're implementing now. Yep. Like, this is just going to get worse and worse. Yeah. And uh, we'll be here to tell you all about it uh, <laughs> for another thousand episodes, Sarah. We hope so. Yeah, I hope, hope so. so. This is great. It's been so much fun to do the show. I love doing the show with you. Can, can um, I just tell you, yes. I appreciate you so much always being here to do the show with me. I know, uh, you know, Glenn Beck, he never shows up anymore. I know. He never shows up anymore. I He's know. over it. But you've been a staple, and I just really appreciate it. Oh, I know thanks. the audience loves it. 
And um, I hope that you'll keep coming on for another thousand. Yes, we love to. I do. I really do, do love it doing it. And then it also it gives me um, leverage against you to come on and do the power hours. With That's us. true. That's true. So That's it works true. out for both of us. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Gonzalez, episode 1000 of the news and why it matters. It's available now at Blaze TV, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Do not miss it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and of course, <laughs> there was alcohol. So it was a lot of fun. Sarah, thanks Cheers. for coming on. Cheers. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And now for the part of the program where I tell you about the most annoying things on earth. From number one, Andrew Cuomo. Mm -hmm. He's back in the news again. He's got an op-ed in the New York Daily News, which is really laughable. It is basically him complaining about how bad the government got in like the two weeks since he left office. Uh, You know, uh, all the, everything that, basically everything that people accuse him of, corruption and, and, and all the, the favors to friends and all of the, all the non well, not all of it, I suppose. No one, he's not accusing anyone else of groping multiple women. Um, I mean, and who would believe it if he did? I mean, Harvey Weinstein wasn't governor, but he was, and a lot of people accuse him of that. Uh, but there's a lot of groping um, and uh, harassment stuff that hit, took him down officially. But there's a lot of other stuff. We went over a bunch of it, you know, things like the ridiculous rail line system that was obviously corrupt. And, of course, uh, you know, the, the situation with the nursing homes, which was the biggest uh, deal. Um, as he says, uh, it's no secret that the Al- Albany establishment wanted me out of office. From their point of view, I was an obstacle. In truth, I would have never signed this budget. I am proud to have been considered a disruptive force to politics as usual. And that is true. Um, You know, usually people uh, are able to vote, uh, but they can't vote when they're dead. So he did disrupt that political process as it normally would go. Andrew Cuomo is awful.com. Speaking of annoying things in the world, let me uh, move from this cup, this mug, to this mug. This is the Colin Kaepernick mug. And Colin Kaepernick is saying he's willing to play. He swears he just needs an opportunity. Not like the other 50 opportunities he's actually had. He needs another opportunity now that he's, uh, you know, uh, moved on. He's 34 years old, has not played since 2016. And when we say he played in 2016, that is a really generous description of what he did on a 1 in 15 team or the year before where he lost his job to Blaine Gabbert. See, this is what the mug says. Always remember, before Colin Kaepernick ever took a knee, he lost his job to Blaine Gabbert. He didn't get fired because he took a knee because he'd already lost his job to Blaine Gabbert. Well, he's saying now he's going to come back and he, he's willing to be a backup for a short time until he becomes the starter. And that is what, what thank you so much. Uh, I guess the Netflix thing isn't working out so well. Um, spam is another annoying thing, and we are drowning in it. Uh, Axios has an article, Americans are drowning in spam with a handy-dandy conservator chart. Yes, conservators, unite. It's Chartapalooza here today on the program. Just the amount, 7.6 billion spam phone calls and 11.7 billion spam messages in the United States when it comes to texts. I will say the text thing seems to be going crazy. I mean, I feel like every other text I receive is some weird spam message. I made the mistake of uh, reading the scam section of Reddit. There's like a, you know, one of the subreddits is scams. And it's just, I mean, there's so much of this. Every other message I send my wife is like, make sure if someone texts you this, don't do anything. Make sure if someone, don't click on any links. Never click on another link. I'm I'm becoming like, you know, a paranoid grandfather. But that is uh, basically the role we all have to play here as we're all rolling in spam. Now, you look, I've talked about Joe Biden a lot, and I'm not always favorable. I don't know if you've even noticed that if you detected it. I keep such a straight tone when it comes to my straight news coverage. You might not be able to detect that I think Joe Biden has not been a very good president. But that is my personal feeling. It doesn't affect my coverage at all. But my personal feeling is he's been a suboptimal president. I know it's controversial and I didn't want to bring you in that deep if I had to. But I can deal with a little bit of inflation. You know what I mean? I can deal with it. I'm fine with inflation. Run those prices up like crazy. No big deal. Who could ever care? You know what? It's just those peasants who have to worry about that type of thing. And uh, as you know, us media elites don't have to worry about such things. However, when inflation hits, fast food. That's when I get pissed. And that's where we are now. Axios has another chart. We're going to uh, the Axios well today a couple times. Thank you, Axios. Here's their chart. $5.94 for a freaking Big Mac. 
Yeah, it's up quite a bit. It's come down a little bit in recent times, but inflation is pounding even McDonald's. So what can I do with all this annoying information? Can I give you anything positive to leave you on? Can I leave you with some good news? And the answer is not usually, but today I can because Taco Bell is bringing back the Mexican pizza. Yeah, that's true. Taco Bell, Mexican pizza. Now that I've said Taco Bell, you know the rule. When I say Taco Bell on the air during the show, that means when I leave the show, I have to go immediately to Taco Bell. It's, it's, one of the, it's in the Constitution. Uh, people know all about it. I got to go to Taco Bell after mentioning Taco Bell. Not my fault, honey. Had to do it. Sorry about the salad. I'm not going to eat it when I get home. Back in a second. Inflation has hit a lot of different areas of the economy. One of them is housing. And if you look at the Case-Shiller Index, it's, a, it's basically like, it's an index that started at like 100. 100 is supposed to be normal housing prices. And you see, like, you know, during the Depression, it was down in the 80s, came up a little bit. During the housing crisis, and you know, right before 2008, it hit like 140 or something ridiculous. And then, of course, it crashed afterwards. Now it's like 180. Prices are high. Prices are high. So if you're going to go buy a home right now, you better make sure you have a really good real estate agent who can warn you off of the overpriced homes. Because, you know, the housing market gets hot. You get competitive. Your competitive juices kick in. You want to go in and, and, and win. Well, just because you paid the most and got the house does not mean you win. You got to make sure you're under control. Not to mention, the opposite is true, too. You want to just absolutely soak people if you're selling right now. Realestateagentsitrust.com, they're good people. They probably won't say it like that, but you want to get as much money as you can out of your home, and this is a big time to do it. Go there now. Find the best real estate agent in your area. It's realestateagentsitrust.com. Get more information at realestateagentsitrust.com. Don't be a felon. Click subscribe right now. Felons don't subscribe to this podcast. You can prove you are not a felon by clicking subscribe right now. And if you rate and review, we'd appreciate it. Five stars is the appropriate number of stars. This one comes in. I love this stupid show. Love the show. Makes my hour-long commute go by super quick. But for the love of all that is good and holy, please stop playing the Katanji Brown Jackson song. I can't unhear it. Five freaking stars. All right. Uh, Also, I hate you. Stop playing Katanji Brown Jackson song. Five freaking stars. You know, you guys are just starting to beg for it. You, you want the Katanji Brown Jackson song, and I'm not going to give it to you, except this one last time. Katanji Brown Jackson, she is for real. Never had a justice quite like her. She's a former public defender. Katanji Brown Jackson, she is for real. I apologize yet again. <laughs> Okay, so here's what happened. A little Easter magic from over the weekend. Uh, There was a school, elementary school, where a a wonderful bunny showed up, an Easter bunny. And the Easter bunny was there to, and was getting mobbed by kids. Obviously, that's what happens when an Easter bunny shows up at an elementary school. So the Easter bunny starts giving out eggs to everyone. There's candy inside, and it's wonderful. And then the Easter bunny starts running a little short on eggs and says, can you go back uh, to my car, get the other eggs? Well, her husband went back, Bunny Rabbit's husband went back and grabbed uh, the other package of eggs. She gave them out. And I will let uh, one of the parents uh, at the school explain exactly what happened. Nathan Jensen writes, a, a parent showed up at my kid's elementary school dressed as an Easter bunny during pickup. He handed out eggs, mostly filled with candy, some with unopened condoms. Not sure this is the Austin weird I signed up for. <laughs> Uh, I guess it was just a mistake. They picked up the wrong condom, the, the wrong eggs. They had some adult eggs. And I, I mean, I don't know why you'd want eggs uh, with, a, with condoms inside. I guess they're doing some sort of safe sex Easter bunny thing, which sounds really, really weird. But I will say this. No kids got pregnant that day, uh, which, which is really good news. Um, StuDoesMerch.com is the place to go to get all your merch from the show. Use the code Stu10. You'll save 10% right now. See you tomorrow.